exactly what. She goes, why don't you say, I do this for work? And if they ask you more questions, then you could tell them about what you do and try to get them to come to shows. I go, oh, use it as business. And I said, well, the truth is, and I posted a picture of this on my, my, my Facebook page, there's a movie, The Boy with Green Hair, which was about a kid who was a war orphan who woke up with green hair and um, found out that the reason he had green hair was so that he could be a voice for all the war orphans and tell everybody in the world that war was bad for children. So he was made in the 40s, you get what you get. But it's funny because his hair was really the same color as mine. <laughs> And I've seen the movie a million times, and I even watched it the other day on Netflix. I even, I went on Amazon to buy it, but it was too expensive, so I got a $2 poster for my house. It's a really cool vintage poster. And I said, it's funny, I, I know this is something the Lord has talked to me about, but I have to get past the fact that I'm being needled. I hate that feeling of being needled. That when people ask me, you know, why, why is your hair like that? I'm going to tell them. I, I got to tell you, I do this so that you come up to me so I can tell you that Jesus loves you no matter how stupid you act. <laughs> you know, I need to tell them. I need to tell them that God loves them. I need, I need to tell them more than just come to one of my shows. I need to, if I'm going to have green air in a city where people are going to come up to me, I need to flip it around and do it for God's glory. And I don't like to be needle. And here I am a preacher. Here I live 24-7 like this, you know? Here, green hair or not, I'm weird. <laughs> people think so, and every day someone comments on it. Every day I have to tell people what I do. I have to justify my existence. So why all of a sudden does it bug me? Well, I'm like everyone else. I wanted to be on my terms. I want it to be when I'm in the mood for it. I want it to be when I'm feeling it. I, I, I want it to be when I'm in a good mood. <laughs> then I'd only be doing about one day every 10 years. <laughs> kind of like Brigadoon, you know? So, um, you know, I, I think that it's the same thing. I think when the holidays roll around, I think a lot of people feel a lot of pressure around Thanksgiving and Christmas especially to have family, to have loved ones, to... You know, to, to be loved. And I think people really suffer. And I have, I, I mean, I've written songs speaking out about that, saying there's, we're putting pressure by our culture by celebrating non-holidays and pretending there's something. And it makes large segments of our populace feel left out. And I think that because I spend so much time being vocal for the Lord, I never even think that for someone like me there could be a next level of being on all the time, being ready all the time, you know, confessing, you know, Jesus before men, having a word in and out of season. I never think like that because I'm on all the time. I'm ready all the time. I'm at the ready all the time more than I'm on all the time, but I'm definitely at the ready all the time. But just like everyone else, I'm like, God, I just... You know, I just want to eat in peace. Walked into Walgreens and an employee made fun of me and packed Walgreens. I turned around and told her to shut up. I didn't think about it. Shut up. She looked at me and I go, I didn't come in here to be made fun of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a green hair. I totally forgot. <laughs> I didn't even know why she was making the jokes and laughing at me. And I was like, excuse me, I have to go find the makeup. <laughs> and walked away. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think that God, through his spirit, is always raising the bar on our expression of love, praise, worship, and on our spiritual service. That no matter where we are, he's taking us to the next level. And I think that when Easter comes around, it asks us, where were we yesterday about the Lord and compared, compared to today's activities and where will we be tomorrow compared to today's activities? 
I think that all religion is exclusionary. Meaning, I think its very existence says, I'm in this group and you're not. I think every form of religion is exclusionary. And I think it may be safe to say that Christianity is the most exclusionary of all religions. So much so, we go to heaven and they don't. But we go to this church and they don't. And we're in this clique at this church and they aren't. And we're friends with the pastor and they're not. I mean, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And I have spent 28 years preaching against that. Today, I want to preach for it. I want to conclude by saying, maybe it's not so bad after all. Everything I just said is true. And everything I just said, except we're going to heaven and you're not, is wrong. But, I think there's another side to Jesus crucified that we don't look at. He had no family and he had no church when he was taken away. Jesus crucified was a man alone. Jesus on the cross was a man with a very, very small church and a very, very small family. I am convinced that his was the best ministry of all time. And I am convinced that his was the best church of all time and I am convinced that he was the best pastor of all time. And I am convinced that he was the best family person of all time. I'm convinced of it. Yet, when it's all said and done, when we think of him, he's alone. When we think of him around throngs of people, he stands alone. When we think of him, even at the Last Supper, surrounded by his people. He's alone, about to be deserted, and about to be murdered. That he had a conspiracy against him from day one. And we have justified, rationalized, to the point of indifference, his aloneness. Well, it had to be this way. No, it did not have to be this way. You know, Jesus could have lived as a human, a sinless life, and died on the cross, and the whole world could have gotten it. And he would have succeeded just fine. It didn't have to go that bad. Well, <laughs> kind of hard to get around the crucifixion, Paisley. Well, okay, does, does the chicken that ends up on our plate have to be in a crate? with 50 other chickens when there's not room for two? They're separate issues. Yeah, it's going to end up bad with the chicken, but can't they have a good life before we eat them? Can't Jesus have had friends and family and church and support and love before the enemy took him away? Or did the whole world have to be his enemy? Well, what did he say? I did not come here to bring peace but a sword. I came here to make sure each one of you feels as isolated and lost and miserable as I did in Gethsemane. Praise the Lord. Maybe this exclusionary, I'm my own church, I'm the only one who goes to my church, I'm my only follower, I'm the only person that listens to me, isn't such a bad thing. Jesus is the one who said a prophet is not without honor except in his own home amongst his own people. Jesus said, we're going to end up isolated. Jesus said, we're going to carry it out across the lawn. Jesus said, it's going to be awful. That's all. He said, if you want to follow me and take part in eternal life, you're going to have to take part in my what? 
my crucifixion and suffering. Well, we crucify our flesh. Oh, we do? We do? That, tell me the last time you knowingly crucified your flesh. Give me a break. Give me a break. As long as there's the word hostess amongst Christians, we are not crucifying our flesh. Give me a break. Give me a break. When was the last time anyone you know used that in a sentence? I am currently crucifying my flesh. And this is how I'm doing it. I would venture to say that most people who will hear this will say, I've never heard anybody say that. I've heard thousands. I should teach on that one night and say what thousands of people say and what they mean. It's fascinating. I think, how do I say this? I'm going, to look at, I'm going to look there and say it so nobody feels like singled out or anything. But I'm curious, today was a day of, there are the rabbits. That's why we have a bunny on Easter. Today was a day for family, fellowship, love, spiritual service, worship, and any other bunny I haven't thought of yet. I wonder how many people invited someone to something today. I wonder. I didn't invite anybody. I, I did. I, I'm lying. I did. I did actually this morning. I did. I put together a last minute Easter thing for my kids. And it was really last minute. I mean, I just got up and I ran around and woke everybody up and said, We're going to do this right now. That's my excuse for not inviting anybody. But seriously, I didn't invite anybody. You know, did anybody invite anyone to church? Did anyone invite them to a potluck? Did anyone invite them to an Easter dinner? Did anyone invite, or did we just cluster in our exclusionary expression of God's love for us through Jesus and crucified and resurrected and do that exclusionary thing where I got mine, I hope you have yours. Which is it? I think there's two kinds of Christianity makes us isolated and alone. I think one is really righteous. I stand for something. I'm doing what God's called me to do. This is what I'm supposed to do. And Jesus said I'm going to feel like crap doing it. Praise the Lord. Then there's the it's just easier doing what I do my way, with my people, in my time, and celebrate God my way. Because this is my day. How well do we know Jesus? How well do we acknowledge Jesus in our day-to-day -day life? What does Jesus crucify mean? Not mean to me. I can't tell you. God, this is something that makes me b -b -b bonkers. This, is, this really makes me bonkers. Is when I hear Christians talk about their church. This is something that makes me crazy. Because they talk about what they get from it. And I really understand that they get a lot. <coughs> I understand. I really do. And there's nothing wrong with getting something out of church. There's nothing wrong with being around people you're comfortable with. There's nothing wrong with anything that people are doing. But what, what makes me crazy is that where that's where it stops. That's where it stops. That all I can remember of all my years of going to church was if I felt like my gifts were being utilized. And I'm not talking about my preaching gifts or my musical talents. I'm talking about just spiritual gifts. Prophecy, words of knowledge, wisdom, healing. You know, that, that I would be able to just as a lay person pray effectively for people and see change that I could be there to counsel people as a lay person effectively and see healing. 
But that's what mattered to me. Yeah, I wanted a good preacher, and I especially wanted good music. But it wasn't enough to go to the movies.